you once said, quote, your future does not depend on the opinions or the permission of others. What does that mean to you? That means that I don't deposit excuses. I make shit happen. You know, I've been an underdog my whole life. Like I told you, I grew up in a trailer. My mama believed in me, said I could do anything I ever wanted in life. She did not, she did not like me gambling, but I've made a damn successful life of the way I live. Tell the audience uh, about your encounter uh, one night with former uh, Boston, Celt- Boston Celtics greats, uh, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. I believe it's Spendini here in Memphis. Oh, wow. Well, it started with the Pump Brothers. I'm sure you've heard of them. Yeah. Uh, out of L.A. They had the number one AAU basketball team in the nation. And Armand Hill, which was assistant coach for the Celtics, I met him. And as a lot of people, he fell in love with me. So – we coached this AU team for the weekend, and he invited me to the Boston Celtics practice. I'm, my mind's not as sharp as it used to be. I think it was 2007 they won the NBA championship, and I was at several practices, and I had this high personality. And Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, they all fell in love with me. And I was telling them I took the place of Elvis when he died, <laughs> and they just thought I was bullshit, but, you know, they loved me. Right. So I said, when you come to Memphis, you make sure you look me up and I'll show you who I am. I said, in Memphis, these are three Hall of Famers. Right. And I promise you, when you come to Memphis, they won't be calling your name out. They'll be calling my name out. And they just love me. Uh, Me and Ray Allen, we played golf. We hustled golf on the golf course. We did all kinds of things. Well, the year they won the NBA championship, you know, they all came to Memphis. They They weren't even playing. They weren't even supposed to come, but they wanted to see me. And I was sick as heck. And I told them, man, I I just can't make it out. And they said, are you kidding? You've been talking that shit all this year. We're about to win an NBA championship for you. So I gutted it out, very competitive, and we met him at Spendini's. And as we walked in, now imagine Kevin Garnett, 6'11", Ray Allen, Paul Pearson, they're screaming out, it's all good. I'm just pumping Kevin Garnett in the ass. It's all good. Catch me at the game. Sit in front row. And they're loving it. They're smiling. Not one person said nothing to them until we sat down. Uh, Being who I am, I've always been a little – I always look around. That's just who I am. Uh, As I'm walking in, John Calipari, I see all kind of people. I'm an avid tennis player. That's another thing people don't know about me. A three-time national champion. And I had to look three tennis girls over there in the corner. All were married. And I saw that they'd been drinking. So I didn't want to deal with them. Plus, I had three Hall of Famers with me. You know, I wanted to spend time with them. I waved at them, and that's all I should have done. Well, you know, these women, you know, they've got their own cocky personalities, too. Right. So we're sitting over there at the table and we're having a good time. And all of a sudden I get a letter from the waitress. This girl said, meet me outside right now. I pass that letter to Paul Pierce. Two minutes later, she passed me up another letter. She says, I want to give you a blow job right now outside. I give that to Ray Allen. We continue on. We continue on our, our our meal, and the check was about to come. We had a limousine. We're all going to Romeo's Gamble at the casinos, and you know they were furious because I didn't give them any attention. If those three people would not have been in Memphis, I would have sat with them, right? And and would have took, you know, the offer. So as I was paying the bill, Ray Allen paid the bill. I'm up paying the bill. The girl gets up behind me. And as I turn around, I touch her because she's right up on me. I don't know. You know. I tell you that I'm looking around. I guess I can't see back behind me, but I'm just so excited about the night and who I'm hanging with. I mean, I couldn't make this up. Everybody's screaming my name. It went perfect. And I turned around and I hit her and she's all up on me. She says, don't you touch me unless you drive a Mercedes Benz make a million dollars a year and got a 10 inch car. Well, I know I ain't got 10 inch, but I got the first two and I get so red. I mean, I'm gushing with red. You know, my mama taught me, son, 
Sometimes you got to take the high road. You know what I want to do? I look at Calipari and he's looking at me. He's he's with his wife. His wife's red. He's he's looking at me. Are you going to take that good fella? And the car salesman came out with me and I said, let me tell you something, you fucking bitch. I do drive a Mercedes Benz. I do make a million dollars a year and I ain't cutting two inches off my cock for nobody. <laughs> They give me a standing ovation. <laughs> no one I got about four and a half. I told her I had a foot dick. That's one of the funniest things I've heard at all. <laughs> oh. oh my God. What a great story. Oh my God. That's so awesome. <laughs>